In the last couple of lectures, we worked on the sign up functionality in our Angular application and we also handled errors returned while making a sign up request to the server. Now, in this lecture, we are going to implement the login functionality from our Angular application and we will also handle any error which can occur while making the login request. So, let's go to VS Code. Here, let's go to auth service file. And here we have our sign up function. Now, in the same way, we are also going to create a login function. And from within this login function, we are going to make a login request. Again, for this login function, we are going to receive the email in the parameter and also the password. And to make a login request, we are going to use the HTTP client object that we are storing inside this HTTP variable. And to make a login request, we need to make a post request. Okay, so let's go to the documentation. And here, now we want to sign in the user using email and password. So let's click on this link and it will take us to the documentation where we can learn how we can sign in a user using email and password. So here you can see the heading. So again, in order to sign in the user using email and password, we need to make a post request. And we need to make the post request to this URL. So this is the endpoint to which we need to make a request, a post request in order to sign in the user to Firebase. So I have copied this link. Let's go back to VS Code and there to this post method as a first argument, we are going to pass that URL. And here we need to replace this API key with our Firebase project API key. So let me copy it from here and let's paste it in place of API key. And we also need to include this square brackets when we are removing it. All right, then the second argument is going to be the request body. So in the request body, let's again go back. So in the request body, we need to pass an object and in that object, we should have email, password and return secure token. And again, just like in case of sign up, this should always be set to true. Let's go back and let me go ahead and let me copy this line from the sign up function where we are creating this object with email password and return secure token and I'm going to use it here in this function also and we are going to pass this data as the request body. Alright. So the first argument is the endpoint to which we want to make the request and the second argument is the request data. Now again, if I go back to the documentation, there you will notice that these are the properties we are going to get in the response. So these properties are same as the sign up response. So there also we were getting this ID token, this email refresh token expires in and local ID. Here we have one extra data which we are going to receive in the response body and that is this registered. So these five data we are also going to receive with the sign up response. But with the login response along with this five data, we are also going to receive this registered data. So it tells whether the email is for an existing account or not. So let's go back to VS Code and there what we will do is we have created one interface, this auth response interface. There also I'm going to add this property this registered property but here we are going to make this registered property optional so in case of sign up we don't need this registered property we only need it for login data so that's why i have made it as optional and again it is also going to be of type string or actually let me check that okay so it is going to be of type boolean so let's set the type as boolean right let's save the changes and now for this post request also we can specify the response data as auth response okay now for the sign up request if you see we are handling any error using this catch error operator so for the login also we want to handle the error using this catch error so what we can do is we can copy this code and we can use pipe method and paste it there but instead of doing it like that what we will do is 
here I will create a private function I'll simply call it as handle error okay and for this handle error we are going to receive the error object let me simply call it as ERR so here also we are calling it as ERR okay and what I will do is I will copy this logic from here or I'll cut this logic from here and I'll paste that logic inside this function all right now here where we are using this catch error there instead of passing an anonymous callback function what we will do is here we will pass this handle error function so here we can simply say this dot handle error okay so now whenever an error will occur this handle error function will be called basically this logic will be executed and same thing we want to do for login also so here also we are going to use pipe operator and to this we are going to pass catch error and to this catch error we will pass this handle error function so here we'll simply say this dot handle error all right now inside this handle error function currently we are only handling these two types of error if email exists and if operation not allowed but if we go back to the documentation for sign in if i scroll down you can see these are the common error codes these are the common errors which can happen when the user tries to log in so this email not found and this invalid password these are the two most common errors which can happen when the user tries to log in then we also have another type of error which is user disabled but we will not handle this error so what we will do is for login we are going to handle email not found and invalid password error let's go back to vs code and here let's add couple of more cases so first let's use this break statement and then let's add another case email not found and when this is the case at that time we want to set the error message to something like this email does not exist okay and let's break and then we also want to add another case for checking the password so let's go back to the document and there the error code is invalid password let me copy this let's paste it here so if that's the case in that case we want to set the error message to let's say provided password is incorrect okay and then let's also add the break statement all right now if i scroll up when we are calling this post method it is going to return us a observable and we want to return that observable from within this login method so instead of subscribing to that observable here we want to return an observable from here for that let's use this return keyword and now let's save the changes in this file let's go to our login component.ts and there inside this else part we are writing the sign up logic and inside this if part we are going to write the login logic so all we are going to do is here we will simply say this dot auth service dot login to this we need to pass the email and we need to pass the password and this is going to return us an observable so we are going to subscribe to it and inside this subscribe method we can write this same logic now instead of doing it like this what i will do is I'll create a property here. I'll simply call it as auth OBS for auth observable. It is going to be of type observable. And in order to use this observable, we also need to import it from RxJS library. And here, let's also specify the type for the observable. So we know that this observable, it is going to return us a data of type auth response. So let's specify the type there. and in order to use it we also need to import it so let's copy this import statement from here from this auth service.ts and let's write that import statement inside login component and now what we will do is we know that this login and this sign up method it is going to return as an observable which is going to emit data of type auth response so 
whatever observable this login method will return or the sign up method will return we will assign it to this auth obs so here let's simply say this dot auth obs equals whatever observable this login method will return and here we are not going to subscribe to it so let me remove this subscribe logic from here same thing we are going to do for sign up so here let's say this dot auth obs equals here we are calling the sign up function and it is going to return as an observable now i am going to cut this subscription logic from here so i have cut that subscription logic from there and all we are going to do is once we have some data inside this auth obs so if we are in the login mode this auth obs is going to store an observable for login request but if is login mode is false in that case this auth obs it is going to store an observable returned by the sign up request so on that observable so here we'll simply say auth obs dot subscribe so i have already copied the logic i have pasted it here so now we are subscribing to that observable which is stored inside this auth obs all right and here also when we are going to make a login request that time also we want to set this is loading to true and once we have the response at that time we want to set it to false or if some error occurs at that time also we want to set it to false let's save the changes here as well and with this let's go ahead and let's test our login functionality so let's go to our application let me open developer console here let's clear everything and now let me try to log in with an existing user so we have a user with email johnsmith at gmail.com and for this user the password is one two three four five six seven eight so when i click on this login button a login request should be sent and you see we have received a response and in the response we can see the display name which is currently empty string email is johnsmith at gmail.com you can see expires in you can see json web token you can see the user id and you can also see registered is set to true okay that means this user which we have tried to log in it is a registered user so the login request is getting sent to the server and in the response we are getting the data of the logged in user now let me clear the console here and let's try to log in a user which does not exist for example john at gmail.com so this user any user with this email id does not exist okay and here the password should be minimum eight characters then only the submit button will be enabled this login button will be enabled and when i click on this login button now we should have this error okay it says an unknown error has occurred but it should say that the email does not exist let me go back to auth service so if email not found in that case the error message should be this email does not exist but for some reason we are getting this error anyway let's go back and let's try to log in an existing user maybe johnsmith at gmail.com but with the wrong password okay when i click on this login button still we can see the error but for some reason the error message it is not displaying properly let's actually see why is that by logging the error object so here let me also go ahead and let me log the error object let's save the changes let's go to our application let me clear the console here and let's try to log in with some invalid email so for example john at gmail.com with this email we don't have any user let's specify a password and when i click on this login button you see it has logged this http error response there if i expand the error we have another error object and in there the message is invalid login credentials but here we have email not found and invalid password so in the documentation there is no mention of this message so let me actually use this message okay but before that let's also check what message we get in case of wrong password so if i try to log in johnsmith at gmail.com with some wrong password 
if I try to log in again an error has been logged there we have this error object in there we have another error object and there also the message is invalid login credentials so this is the same error message for both wrong email id and wrong password so we are going to handle this one so in here instead of checking for email not found we will check for invalid login credential i will remove this case from here and here we will say the email id or password is not correct okay let's save the changes now let's go back to our application and let's try to log in with a wrong credential so for example wrong email address let's say password is one two three four five six seven eight and when i try to log in the email id or password is not correct now let's supply a valid email id which is johnsmith at gmail.com but some wrong password and in that case also we should get the same error message the email id or password is not correct so now it is working okay so now the login functionality is also implemented from our angular application so we have our sign up functionality in place and we also have our login functionality in place so now the user can authenticate himself by logging into our application and whenever a user signs up that user will get created inside this firebase server so currently we have two users mary jane and john smith but if a new user wants to register he can simply register it using this register form and once the user is registered he can also log into the application using this login form so this is all from this lecture so now when a user signs up or login in the response we are getting the user data next we need to store that user data and also the json web token which we are receiving in that user data in the response data in some storage so from the next lecture let's start working on that functionality this is all from this lecture thank you for listening and have a great day